Over the many years of investigative journalism that I've undertook, trying to expose the dark underbelly of the Bachelor franchise, I've come to know a few things about this show, but none more important than nothing is ever quite what it seems. Which is why, as the seasons come out, and the franchise's journey for love makes its way to our airwaves, I always have one eye on the show, and one eye pointed in the other direction. In the place they don't want us to look, the place where they cover up all their deep, dark conspiracies. Conspiracy theories like Tasha Adams was always planned to be the 2020 Bachelorette, or that Bachelor creator Mike Fleiss isn't actually real, he's a supercomputer designed to turn romance into dramatic manipulation. And it's there, in the deep dark corner of Bachelor Nation, that I started to unveil what could possibly be the biggest conspiracy in Bachelor Nation history. Something that calls into question the whole premise of the show, and the reality of this reality TV program. Something that could indicate that everything is controlled before anyone steps in front of a camera. Okay, but right now, I want to stop. Normally, at this point in a conspiracy video, I would tell you all about how my conspiracies have never been wrong, how I present these videos with 100% facts that are always thoroughly vetted or have come my way from a top secret super high up important and shocking source seen here. First off, let me just say it's important that I remain anonymous, although I do know every detail that I will share with you now. Unfortunately, my source is trying to keep out of the public eye right now, so I won't divulge any more. But no, instead of telling you these conspiracies have never been wrong, I must tell you the truth. Sometimes I just make it all up. But this time, the conspiracy comes from facts that caught my attention and got my conspiracy senses tingling. And I can now confirm that from this moment on, everything I say is 100% true without any doubt or satire confirmed. And it all starts with JoJo's season of The Bachelorette. <gasps> Now, stay with me here because this isn't about JoJo or her season per se, but it's where the investigation begins. And Exhibit A revolves around a particular contestant from that season, Luke Pell. If you follow the channel, you'll know that a few weeks ago I released a video all about some of the past Bachelor contestants who were almost the Bachelor or Bachelorette lead. And in that video, one of the contestants I detailed was Luke Pell. Long story short, Luke was on the cusp of becoming The Bachelor until word came out that he was approaching multiple women about being on his season and sort of planning everything out, even telling one woman that she'd be his final pick. Once word of this started to get out, and that woman even released multiple YouTube videos spilling the tea, Pell was suddenly dropped as the lead and Ari got the job instead. Now why is this important? Well, it's important because it establishes a pattern within the franchise. A pattern that only really became clear to me in the last few weeks with the wild news about Matt James and Rachel. Now, at the time I put out my latest Bachelor Nation Couples video a couple of weeks ago, Matt and Rachel had been spotted together in New York, reviving speculation that the two were back together. But since then, even more information about the status of their relationship has come out, and upon hearing the latest tea, my mind immediately snapped back to Luke Pell. Take a listen and maybe it will for you too. So, Matt and Rachel are seen in public together and pictures of the two are put out through major publications. And once this happens, the news reaches a woman named Grace Ammerling, a woman who claims to have been seeing Matt James right before filming The Bachelor. And upon seeing those pictures of Matt and Rachel hanging out in New York, Grace got a little bit upset, as Matt had apparently been reaching out to her just before that and asking her to get together. So she reached out to Reality Steve to spill the tea. Now Grace does say that her and Matt's relationship before filming was, quote, a romantic friendship, as we can see in this Instagram Live. I would say I had a, uh, I would say a romantic friendship with Matt um, before the show. But what bothered her isn't the time before the show, it's what happened after filming that prompted her to reach out as she insists 
Matt hasn't been as honest about everything as it might seem. Then he was announced as The Bachelor um, a couple days after we went on a date, and then we continued to talk. We went on another date, um, and he tried to get me to go on the show and nominate me to go on the show. Matt had asked Grace to come on the show. Now, at first, Grace said no, thinking that she'd be portrayed as the villain because she had a past with Matt. Then later, she did decide to apply, but never made it to the final cast list. But ultimately, the story I'm getting at here is that, allegedly, Matt was trying to cast his own season. And if you recall, there was another woman who did make the initial cast list for Matt's season, who he already knew. Remember Madison? We talked about her in the pre-season preview breakdowns from that season, and she was a part of the original cast list of women announced around early October, but never made it to the night one cut. But with this news, it begs the question, was she invited to apply for the show by Matt as well? I don't know. But what I do know is that this whole story felt familiar. It felt like something I had seen once before. Oh, déjà vu. Matt James invited women he knew to be on his season. Luke Pell invited women he knew to be on his season. And before I knew it, the tinfoil hat was on my head and I was flying straight down the rabbit hole wondering, if this was happening now, and this was happening in 2016, how many seasons from this franchise had this already happened on, but was never found out? Is this normal? And is this actively encouraged by production? Just take a moment to think about it. Remember last season of Bachelor in Paradise where everyone had pretty much already met at Stagecoach? All the people who had hooked up and went to the beach with expectations and plans? Then this year we have sightings of Bachelor Nation cast members seen out together in the months before Paradise begins filming? Kit and Bennett? Ivan and Heather? Could it be happening all over again? Well, the truth is, the idea that aspects of the show are pre-planned is almost certainly true to a degree. It's just about figuring out to what degree. Undeniably, we now know some people are sort of trying to stack the deck when it comes to preparing for an upcoming season of the show, and that not everyone goes on the show with an interest in love. Certainly, almost everyone goes on the show knowing it could lead to social media stardom, and I actually think that's totally fine, just as long as it's accompanied by a real desire to find a partner. We see so often people who've applied for the show thinking, well, why not? Best case scenario, I fall in love. Worst case, I have a cool experience and get to shill bath and body products for thousands of dollars per post. But it's the people who go on with zero intention of actually finding a partner, that's where things get problematic. It might be because you have a girlfriend. I don't have a girlfriend. And believe me, first and foremost, I think the onus of finding a lead who's not problematic falls on production. And when it comes to The Bachelor, specifically The Bachelor Show, not The Bachelorette, they've had a pretty terrible track record of late. So here's where the real conspiracy comes into play. When it comes to pre-planning a season, it's not just being done by a lead like Matt James or Luke Pell, the Bachelor people are actively encouraging this behavior. Now, why? Think about this. Matt, or whoever the lead is, invites someone to be on the show that they are actually interested in dating. Production lets that person go on the show, a real romance blossoms because they had chemistry and a connection before filming, and the show gets their happy ending, finally putting that horrible Bachelor franchise track record to bed just as long as no one finds out. Now, of course, you could be asking, but Bachelor fan take, how could production be in on it if they've actively tried to prevent these people from being on the show? Grace never made it past final casting, Luke was pulled from being The Bachelor before his season started filming, doesn't that mean production is trying to prevent this? Well, maybe, but maybe not. Consider Madison, who was cast to be on the show, until people found out Matt and her dated. Not good for the show. Luke Pell was found out too. Not good for the show. He was removed. Grace never made it past final casting, but remember what she said about not wanting to be the villain? Her knowledge of the show and how she might be portrayed could easily have scared off casting, or maybe casting thought, we've already cast one of Matt's exes at this point, 
Why add another and risk them talking to each other just like what happened with Luke Pell when two women who were undergoing casting, after being invited to be on the show by Luke, ended up getting together and spilling the tea. And we know production knew about a lot of the pre-Bachelor in Paradise shenanigans that happened before Paradise Season 6. So while I'm not saying it's impossible that production was indeed trying to prevent these pre-cast seasons, I'm saying it's not not impossible. In fact, with how production has acted in the past, one might say it's highly plausible. We've received a litany of highly scripted events on this show over the years. So the question is, how involved could production actually be in guiding a lead to precast a season? Is it something they might discover and let slide? Is it something they quietly encourage? Or is it something they actively drive forward? Think about it. Do you think production could be capable of such a thing? It's not true. That's impossible. Search your feelings. You know it to be true. Peter doesn't know I'm here. Peter is single. Are you in love with Peter? He ended his engagement because of his feelings for you. It's very possible that it's something that is a little bit true and a little bit false. It can be that way. When I was a little boy fantake, I used to love wrestling, and I didn't take it too well when someone told me, Wrestling's fake. Wrestling's not fake! But as little kid fantake came to realize, while wrestling was fake, it still involved a whole lot of athleticism and a whole lot of pain and injury for those involved. In the same way, this show can be overly produced, but still churn out real and lasting relationships. The two things don't have to be mutually exclusive for this idea to ring true. So, keep your eyes peeled and your tinfoil hats snugly attached to your head. For while we don't know if this pre-casting from Bachelor Leads is just something that's coincidentally happened twice, or if it's something that's been happening for years. And with that, you have your conspiracy. Do with the information what you will. I'm just gonna leave it right there and vanish back into the shadows. And if you never hear from me again, know that what I said might just be true. And the mic play supercomputer has me, somebody send help! So that's it for this Bachelor conspiracy video. I hope you enjoyed it and know that it's all in good fun. And if you did enjoy it, be sure to give the video a like and subscribe for more, as we've got tons of Bachelor Nation content to get to as we draw closer to Katie season in a few weeks. So until then, Bachelor Fantake, out. So you guys are gonna use that voice changing technology, right? Yeah, absolutely, you're all good. Alright, thanks guys. Appreciate it. And seriously, you can't tell at all who I am. Nope, you're good. Okay, thanks guys. Talk to you later.